Hi designers, it's Haley with Silver Moon Design School and I'm back today with a special request. This is one from Natalia and she asked me to create a baby sippy cup tumbler with a plastic lid. So I'm going to show you step by step using Adobe Illustrator and Adobe Dimension how to create those shapes. So let's get to it. To start things off, I have a new Adobe Illustrator file opened and I have placed my reference image, which is this cute little green sippy cup. I've placed this on a reference layer and locked it. And then on my second layer above it, that's going to stay unlocked. It's just going to be my art layer. That's where I'm going to work. But I want to keep the sippy cup on its own so it doesn't move around. So what I'm going to do first is draw a box around this sippy cup and I'm going to flip it to an outline so that I can really make sure that I'm getting the whole width of the box represented. Um, make sure you have your rulers turned on and drag a ruler to the center point. And I'm going to go ahead and reuse this rectangle. So I'm going to come over to my scissors tool and snip on this line at this center point with the ruler that we just drew. And I'm going to delete the left side and then I'm going to adjust at the bottom to make sure that my line lines up with the top and the bottom of this cup. So you can see that the cup is tilted at an angle um, slightly because of how the base here curves around. So you're not looking at it completely straight on. So what I like to do is imagine it a little bit like you just tilted it right up um, or that the the lens isn't warping it either because that does happen. So I'm going to follow the outline of the shape, but roughly. I'm still going to leave a little bit to my imagination. Um, so I will follow this curve. But then like I said, I'm going to imagine that this is the bottom of the cup and I'm looking at it as a direct half slice. So I'm not going to follow this curve exactly. I will make a little bit of a curve, but maybe like a 0.2 radius instead of this really steep radius um, and I mean I could even do a 0.3 I think that's even fair yeah 0.3 is a good radius and I don't need the radius at the top though so if it accidentally selected it like it just did for me um, go ahead and make the edge of the cup um, a sharp edge like this and honestly we're not even going to use it because I'm going to go back to my scissors tool and click on the top and delete the top line because I want this to be hollow. It doesn't matter much because this is going to be completely opaque, but if you did want to make this clear plastic, then that would matter. You would want the opening at the top. Otherwise, and you'll see in a minute, you would have a shape that was solid at the top and it wouldn't look like a cup. It would just look like a round, solid object. So I'm going to increase my stroke and also select a color. So I'll choose a green just using my eyedropper tool and flip back to the outline, increase the stroke to two or three. And that's going to account for the thickness of the shape that we're gonna create. And you'll see that now, cause I'm gonna open this 3D and materials panel and I'm going to click on revolve. And you'll see here that the stroke does affect the thickness of the cup. As I go up in stroke thickness, it makes the plastic thicker. So it, again, doesn't matter much because we're creating a solid shape, but if you had any kind of opacity translucency, then you would want to pay attention to that a little bit more. Okay, and that's the cup portion. Next, I'm going to focus on the lid. So I'm gonna leave the cup at the bottom here just so I have a good reference and I'm, I'm ensuring that I make the lid bigger than the circumference. So I'll take my circle tool and I'll just drag it outside the bounds. Where's the, okay, so there's the edge of our cup and I'll make it a little bit wider than that. Perfect. And then I'll also flip and make that a solid because we're going to use a slightly different tool this time. So now that I have the circumference, I'm gonna pull it over so I can reference the ridges here but I'm going to click on 3D materials and extrude. Now you can see that it just makes a solid cylinder and I need to add a little more detail to make this look more realistic. So I'm going to scroll to this section that says bevel and from the drop down, select round. That's gonna give us the rounding shape that we have here. 
and I will just adjust um, scrolling down because I want to look at a few different angles before I really make sure that I have all of the shapes correct. Width, I'm going to lower that down to about 25, 26, same with the height. Um, the other thing that I want to do is that there's additionally like this round um, kind of like donut like shape that goes on top that's a nice detail. So I'm going to copy the circle that we just made and turn off, I mean just click the eyeball for the 3D and materials. And then I'm going to duplicate this shape and I'm going to duplicate the circle and drag it inside. And then I'm also going to slightly shrink both of those down over to my pathfinder and select the minus front and that's going to give us that donut shape. Now when I turn back on 3D and materials I can play with the depth. I'm going to type in a manual number instead of using the toggle so I think that's going to give me a more precise shape. So I chose 0.05 because it's a subtle ridge right and then I'm also going to let me rotate around. I'm going to make the width and the height taller and sometimes as I adjust these bevel shapes I do go back and I say I don't need the depth to be so deep because the bevel is adding a little bit of height. So I reduce my depth down to 0 0.03 and I have my bevel shape at 73% and height at 86%. Next we have probably the more complex piece which is the tapered drinking part, the little sippy straw that goes in their mouth. So the way that I'm going to go about this I'm going to take advantage of this new taper tool. So let me show you how I'll do that. So I'll come back to my oval tool or my circle tool oval tool and I'm going to draw an oval like such. And I can see here that there's two holes that act as the straw. So I'm going to draw two little circles like such and I'm going to group them together. I want to make sure that they're really centered, so I'm just going to stay on the safe side and use the align vertical align center to make it center center. Come back to pathfinder and minus front. So now I have this little like piggy nose shape and I will click on extrude. And as I rotate around to look at the depth, I'm going to have to keep a close eye on my reference image so that I can replicate that height. I don't know that I'll get all of the complexity of the shape, but I'm going to get it 90% there. There are limitations when it comes to dimension, so I try to keep that in mind. I can't wait for the day where we have all of the tools that we need to make these like very tapered and clean designs, but for now we have to compromise just a little bit on the complexity of the shape. So here I'm going to click on taper, and you can see that it's bringing one side of that sippy nozzle in. So I'm going to rotate it around so that I can see it with the taper side the correct way up. And then I also want to take the depth and adjust that. We're still working on it. And sometimes I'll move and hold it over. Um, I can also just increase the size of it overall, just holding shift and moving those corners up. The other part is that it's beveled, right? So I'm going to click Add a Bevel make it round and I'm going to bevel both sides so that it has the roundness on both ends. The bottom end will actually be tucked inside but the top end is what matters and I just I love having both options. So I'm going to rotate this around so you can see the top and the bottom. I mean the taper I could do even a little bit wider and make it just a little bit bigger. So I'm just going back and forth, tweaking some things until it's proportionally like the sippy cup example that we have shown. And yeah, I think that's pretty close. Like I said, we're not going to be able to replicate all of the features and the dimensions at this point. So I'm happy with this and we're going to roll with it. So now we're going to highlight all of these shapes on this layer, right click and go down to this section that says collect for export and then click as multiple assets. This was a shortcut that someone commented and showed me and I'm so grateful because it does save a lot of time rather than having to export each individual one. And then from here, I'll just say this is the straw, this is the donut. You can name them whatever makes sense to you. I just kind of label them as it makes sense to me. 
and then I make sure that they're all highlighted with this blue outline. I come down to format, click on OBJ, and then export them. All right, and that wraps up part one of how to create those OBJ files of the plastic sippy cup. Now we're gonna jump into Adobe Dimension and put all the pieces together. So join me in part two.